it's Doris with Aldi Books and I got home a little earlier than usual and it was sunny when I was driving home and it's fading fast now but I thought I would just see if I can get a, another Q&A video part two of three parts to this part two up before I lose the sun so here goes these are great questions y'all they're so awesome um, Brown Girl Reading says, uh, tell me which African-American writers that you like reading and why. So, uh, we're reading Christopher Paul Curtis in my class right now. He is a middle grades um, author and so, so brilliant. His books are hilarious and so poignant at the end. I just I just love him and I have a special place in my heart for brilliant writers that write for children it's just um, it's just a special thing the other one is Maya Angelou she is just the queen her word usage is oh, you can hear the angel saying it's so gorgeous and obviously what she writes about is so profound so yes those are great ones I think I need to make it my project in 2018 to read some of the other big guns because I haven't read any Jessamyn Ward yet other than um, the essay collection that she just um, edited and I don't know if edited is the right word anyway and um, Toni Morrison oh my gosh yeah so I got to get some of her books and work on her this coming year definitely um, Onion Budgie, is there a book genre that you've not yet tried for whatever reason? I would say no, with the exception of um, erotica probably. Um, I've read romance novels, racy ones, but erotica not so much. But I just read so much else. I mean, yeah, I, I'm a very, very, I'm a very varied reader so yeah I read all the genres um, Kelly Hales is your son a big reader also can you recommend any books for kids I have an 11 year old boy um, he is he watches a lot of YouTube and Netflix and he really likes um, informational pieces about history or science or just complete randomness um, but he reads a lot at school because obviously they can't be on, you know, YouTube at school. So he reads a lot. He usually keeps a book with him all the time and reads it um, on the bus and at school. And yeah. And I just put up the video yesterday or this morning. I can't remember which. But yeah, I put up the um, recommendations video for middle grades. So yay. Um, Leah Hide and Seek. Where would you take your son for the holiday of a lifetime? Random question, I know, but I always think it is great to see where people dream of visiting. Um, we are actually trying to visit all 50 states while he's home with me. And last summer, I just mentioned we went to Colorado and also Utah on that trip. And that was amazing. Um, the summer before that, we went up the East Coast. So we got six states in from Boston to New York. That was also an amazing trip. This next summer, we're planning on doing um, Washington, um, Oregon, and Cal Northern California. So fun times. Um, Tam R. So excited. I'm a newish subscriber. Not sure what to ask. What's your favorite book and how many cats do you have and what are their names? I've already answered the cat question in the previous video. And my favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird. There it is again. <laughs> I think I mentioned that one in the previous video as well. Uh, Kia, Fo, Kia Fo. Where is your favorite place to read? Um, I like to read in the living room. We have a big chair and I like to sit there because I like to be where the action is. So we are usually all in the same place, me and Gabriel and the kitties. We like to be together even though we're doing different things. Um, 
Literary Prince, do you ever get bored of BookTube? How have you changed as a reader since starting BookTube? Um, I don't get bored with BookTube. This is only my first year on BookTube, thus the Q&A for my BookTube birthday. Um, but I try really careful, I'm very careful to not overtax myself on BookTube um, because I have had a hobby turned into a part-time job before and um, yeah, it can kind of wear you out eventually if you're not careful. So I'm careful of that. And changed as a reader, um, I, I would say I was a voracious reader as a child. I don't know, you know, I just had a book all the time. And I, you know, when my son was born, I, I had to quit reading for the most part. I read a romance novel every once in a while. Um, but I just, I'm very, I admire people that can read. I, I just, I ignore life. <laughs> And so my son is much more independent now and so I, I got back into reading seriously um, four years ago I started I set a goal of 52 books for the year and I managed to meet that um, two years running and then I joined booktube last year in December and managed to read 60 books that year and this year um, full tilt with booktube I have read like 150 some odd already um like an obscene amount of books and it's been so much fun and i would say that booktube really helps like i mean it's it's social so i like that aspect it's motivational that way but also just so many great recommendations that i'm always reading books that are excellent so that's motivational too to know how good the books are um Amy Van Ziel, what book would you recommend to break through a slump? Um, I would recommend a particular style of book. So um, when you're in a slump, I think it's important to read what I call a fast paced book. So one that has a driving plot to keep you involved in the story and, and get through it quickly. Just, I don't know, that kind of boosts your um, connection with the book sometimes. So two that I've read recently like that would be um, The Thousand Lanterns. Oh, here they are. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> so um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid was fabulous that way. And Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow also. So yeah. I would definitely, if you're in a slump, pick up a, a fast paced read to get you powered through it. Um, Arena Stolier, how did you get into teaching and do you write? I, like, I can vividly remember being about seven or eight and being in our basement um, reading stories to my cats and pretending that I was teaching a class and my dad walking in on me and me being so embarrassed because I was kind of shy about stuff um, as a child. But yeah, I just always, I never really thought of anything else. Um, I remember a teacher telling me, you know, my senior year of high school, um, I had made a really decent score on my ACT and she pulled me aside and said, um, you you need to really think about this you could really you know do something with your life and I'm like still to this day I think what a stupid thing to say you know teaching is doing so much with your lives and the lives of so many other people so anyway always it, it just was um do I write no <laughs> um I actually probably would have loved loved to be an English teacher um, and be an English major, but I hated to write back then and knew that I would be writing a lot of papers if I majored in English. So I majored in biology because I knew there would be multiple choice tests that I could handle easily. Shameful. Um, Laura Fry, what are your booktube pet peeves? Um, initially I thought, well, I don't have pet peeves because if I don't like something, I just, you know, don't watch it. I move on. And then I was like, duh. What makes you move on, Doris? So, um, one thing that makes me quit watching 
is if you talk too much about the plot of a book. So um, I definitely, I don't like to know too much about a book before I go into it. What I do want to know is what connection did you have to the book that makes you think it was really special? So tell me something interesting that happened and something that it made you think about or what emotional connection did you have with the book? But don't go on and on and on and on about the plot. If I want to know that, I'll go to Goodreads and read the synopsis. I truly want to know what connection you had to the book. So yeah, yeah. I just need a sentence or two about what the book's about and then let's move on with life. Um, Claire reads books and this is the last one for today and this is going to be shorter than 16 minutes. Um, Claire reads books. Is there a book that isn't often taught in schools that you think should be required reading for high schools? Um, and the answer to that is no because I think um, teaching novels is a very, um, it requires connection. So I want to, I'm very careful in choosing the books that we read each year and I want to have the liberty to do that because, oh my gosh, there's so many amazing books out there in the world. Um, you could teach so many things, but number one, you have to know your audience. So you have to get a feel for who your kids are and what their interests are and what's going to connect with them. And you have to teach what you love as well. I mean, if, if I don't feel excited about the book, I'm not going to teach it as well, in my opinion. So I don't really like required books. I like to have choices um, and to teach, you know, what interests you and what you think interests the kids. Um, and she mentioned To Kill a Mockingbird and Great Gatsby because those are the two big guns that are always taught. And you know how much I love To Kill a Mockingbird, but I don't teach it every year because um, I don't always have a class that can handle it. Um, it's a longer book and kind of wordy and, you know, teaching ESL, sometimes my kids just aren't, aren't there for that. Um, and The Great Gatsby, I really don't like that book. I mentioned I don't like the... Um, Roaring Twenties is an era, really. Um, but I have sat in English classrooms as an inclusion teacher and listened to teachers that really can teach it well, and it's just brilliant. So I do like it now more so than I ever have just because people have taught it well. So there's that. And a couple examples. Like I mentioned we're reading um, The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963, and that is just really working out well for me and um last year we read um animal farm that was the first time i i teach the watsons all the time not every year but quite often but this was my first time teaching animal farm and i just i don't know i had an intellectual group and i thought they would connect with it and i was right it just went so well and i had them make graphic novels so a spread for each chapter and it was just brilliant. They just loved it. It was awesome. So yeah, I just, I just love that, you know, being able to choose. So anyway, thanks for watching. There will be one more Q and A up before the month is over and yeah, I'll chat with you soon. Bye.